Hi friends, let's make a beautiful pendant light out of a beautiful pot. For this project, you'll need a terracotta pot. You can also use plastic, but I was going for something that mimicked ceramic or porcelain and had a more durable feel. Joanne has a variety of really great pots right now, and I got these for like 70% off. You're also going to need a drill, a couple of diamond head drill bits, a pendant light fixture, and then your light bulb of choice. I'm using these as grow lights for my plants, so I'm using an LED grow light. Okay, so here's my, my prototype, my first one to see if it would work. First of all, I feel like this ended up being a little bit too shallow and the bulb just kind of sticks out the bottom side and it's very bright, so unless it's hanging really, really low, it's gonna hit you in the face and so I recommend a bit of a deeper cover, fixture, pot. So I think I'm just gonna use this as a decorative plant pot and upgrade this one with this one so that it has a little bit more cover and also this shape is just so much cuter. The other thing is I tried to cut out this circle with a couple different tools. I used a Dremel and I used um, like actually a metal piece that goes on the drill that has teeth and it just wouldn't, it wouldn't go through the terracotta for some reason. So I ended up ordering a set of these little diamond head. They, they're just covered, this one's covered in terracotta right now. Mine came with a whole bunch of different sizes and this one is the perfect size. Um, I think it's like one and a half inches or something like that. I'll, I'll link all of the information in the box so you can do this without such trial and error. Here's the thing though, you're gonna need to kind of make a divot by hand. If you just put this right into the drill and then start drilling, it's gonna jump all over the pot. So it's very time consuming, but you're basically just gonna place this on here and try and keep it centered and grind it in. Okay, so let's, let's get started. Start off by making sure you get all of the stickers and little pads off of your pots. If you get the ones from Joanne, they have these little sticker feet that are very hard to get off and I found the best way was to scrape them off as much as you can and then take a bit of sandpaper and smooth everything out. Um, definitely don't use anything like Goo Gone because remember this is a terracotta pot, it's very porous and it will just soak right in. Next, take your drill bit and center it up as much as possible. I'm just eyeballing this and it worked out for me, but if you know how to do a formula to find the center of a circle or you just wanna take a little ruler and make sure that you are centered, that's not a bad idea. Then take a pencil and mark it off so that you can find the center every time and then you're just gonna get to grinding. This is a little bit tedious and you, you just have to stick with it. It's truly the worst part, but this is the way that we are going to get the groove so that we can actually gain some traction once we put this into the drill. If it helps, you can also put the drill bit into the drill and without pulling the trigger, just use the weight and grip of the drill for traction. I probably shouldn't have worn a dress for this DIY, but it really helps to brace the pot between your legs. And eventually, once you have a decent groove, you can see if it's ready to start being drilled. So I'm putting down a towel as a buffer between the pot and table, and then adding a little bit of water and going very, very slowly. As your groove becomes deeper, it's so much easier to hold your drill in place and it's like smooth sailing from here on out. All you have to do is go slow, get rid of that excess terracotta dust as you go, and eventually you will bust through and make a perfect little hole. Wow. 
look. Oh, is that not amazing? Look at this. Look at this. Oh my gosh. So here are a couple of options with painting these. We could just spray paint them, do some really light coats of spray paint. You could also spray paint the inside gold or silver so it has like more of like a reflective um, element. For me, I have this pink palette going on and I have actually painted all of my lamps to match the wall that I painted. And so this is Dunn Edwards. They sent me like a little, what is this, a quart? Two pints. Yes, this is two pints in all of my colors. So I have so much left over and I really love this one. And this is the lightest pink and it's called Light Carob. Doesn't that just sound delicious? Light carob, mm, oh, well, on the walls, it's light carob. This is actually painted in light carob, and it's almost like, it's just like a little ballet petal pink. It's so beautiful. Painting terracotta is actually quite enjoyable. It's very porous, so it absorbs the paint and dries really quickly. So you just need to do a very light coat, let it dry completely, and then go in with at least one more coat for opacity. Okay, so I had to pause yesterday because I lost the light and I also wanted to just prime my pot after painting it. It wasn't really sticking very well. And I also needed to coat the inside. So I did that today. It looks really good and let me show you. Here's the before, cute little pot, and here is the after. I primed it with this. It's Rust-Oleum Heirloom White. So that white is just barely lighter than the pink and I think it's just gonna have like a nice reflective property. So let me show you how to put this together. It's so, so easy and then we'll just hang them up. Take your light fixture. It should fit perfectly. And then you'll take this piece. It hangs so well, it's so good. Okay, so take your light bulb. See how much space there is. I mean, it's not a ton, but there's at least two and a half inches between the bulb and the base of the cover. And that's just going to allow me to hang it a little bit higher because the higher it hangs, the more you will be able to see the bulb. These are grow lights, so they have UV rays in them. So you definitely don't want to look at them and you don't want to spend a lot of time under them. I don't think that they are anywhere near as damaging for your eyesight or your skin as the sun, but just keep that in mind when you hang them, make sure that you're not like constantly seeing it out of your peripheral view or sitting right under it. I think it might have the same effect of a tanning bed. I'm not sure. So there you have it friends, elegant pendant lights made out of pots. I think with all of the discounts I used, I probably got each pot for less than $10. And then with the combination of the light fixture and the grow bulb, I know each one was under $20. 
they may be under 15. I'll have to do the math and put it below, but I really, I really got a good deal on these. A few things to keep in mind. Make sure you are using everything to the manufacturer's instructions. My LED lights say not to use near moisture. And as you can see, I have a humidifier running right under this one. So I may move things around. Just be careful, use caution, use common sense. And if you want to, you can reinforce the cord. Um, and I recommend you do that. However, I don't know. I think they're light enough that it's not gonna be a problem. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment below. I love to hear from you guys. So if you have any thoughts, feelings, ideas, if there's anything that you want to see from me, please let me know. I promise you I will be back next week with another DIY. I'm not really thrifting right now because the pandemic is still raging on in Los Angeles and I'm just not going out at all, really. So a lot of my projects are happening at home. I'm doing a lot of baking and I might, I might do my cookie experiment next week. Have a wonderful week, you guys. I will see you next week. Bye.